Hello, welcome to the second part of my Second Life scripting tutorials. Today we're going to look at something called states. A state is simply a block of code or programming instructions. States are a great way to organize your scripts, especially the more complicated ones. A script will run in one state, in a loop, until you tell it to swap to another state. Everything about the old state is forgotten and the new state will run in a loop until you tell it to swap and so on. For basic scripts you only need one state. Let me bring up the example script we were working on last time. I'm going to right click and edit. I get my edit window here and I'll double click our script and you can see this is the default script that uh, comes with Second Life. When you first create a, a script it will, it will put this in. So for basic scripts you only need one state. Uh, every script needs to have a single, you must have at least one state and you must have a state called default and this is what this is here. You can see it's called default, and then it's got these curly braces. Uh, and everything inside these curly braces is running within the state. So you can see this is my block of code. And it's indented with tabs just to make it easier to read. And then this curly brace signifies the end of the default state. So all my code goes inside this state. Uh, events will fire inside that state when my script starts. So you can see here, state entry. This is the first event that will fire when the default state is run. Uh, when things happen in world, so when the object is touched or spoken to or anything like that. So what about more states or more uh, complicated scripts? So I can use an example. If you've ever resed a dance ball, the first thing it will do is load in all the animations that you've put inside it. You'll probably see a progress bar or a counter while it loads them and then it will say ready in local chat or something like that and then people can click on it to dance it will only load the animations the first time you res it and then from then on people can dance by clicking on it so those are the two states it's, it's got two states the first state is loading all the animations and then once that's done the script will switch into another state which will let people dance so in fact using this as an example here is where I would say to load in all the animations um, I'm just going to put a comment in with with two forward slashes to say load animations here and then once I've loaded the animations I'm going to switch to a state called dance and I'll go through the code later on this is just sort of the theory really so this is telling the script now that we're done with the default state we want you to switch to a new state called dance and we will create that state down here. So you can see the states are completely separate and I'm going to call this one dance. And I'm going to open a curly brace. I'm going to put in a state entry function which every script must have. And I'm going to close the state dance. And then here we can say uh, wait for people to touch to dance. So these are the two states, the default state and the dance state. When you're writing complicated scripts, like a dance ball, or particularly a game where you've got players who are signing into the game and then you've got the game happening and then at the end of the game you've probably got a little winner's state which will announce the winners and maybe give out prizes. When you're writing complicated scripts you want to plan out how your script is going to work. Will it load note cards or animations or ask for permissions first? And if that's the first thing you want it to do, it's got to go in the default state. The default state is what runs when your script first runs, and that's why you've always got to have one, otherwise Second Life doesn't know which bit of code to run first. And then what other states will you have in your script? And then you can plan out complicated scripts really using states and then events. What are events? Well that's the next topic for part 3. I hope you found the video useful, please leave any comments or questions below the video, and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you.